Hello, everyone. Welcome out to the Cars, Bars, and Guitars podcast episode number 12. I'm AJ. And I'm Steve. Hey, Steve, who are we brought to you today by? We've got a surprise sponsor, AJ. It's Victoria's Secret. Why that? They've got a new Brazier out called the Croatia. Oh? All support, none of the cup. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's the way it is shaped. Have you seen that picture that says, Bosnians, hey, I want to go to the beach. Croatia, no. <laughs> <laughs> And Steve, what are we drinking today? The Highwire Horacha 10W40. Horchata? Whatever. <laughs> Horacha Sriracha. Imperial Stout be- be- Beard, brewed with vanilla, almonds, cinnamon, lactose, and chocolate. Cheers. Let's see here. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite kind of alcoholic you That is the best Frappuccino ever. It really. It, I think Starbucks should put this on their menu. Isn't there a Starbucks in... Uh, it was not California, but the one that served uh, beer and wine? There is... Uh, uh, I, I would venture guess Seattle, since that's their home turf, but they've been moving that direction to offer brews of more sorts. We are uh, already f- uh, less than two minutes into new podcast, and uh, now we're it's looking shit up again. <laughs> uh, Starbucks. I even brought the look shit up more bigger, better one thing too. Starbucks alcohol. I'm just gonna. I'll just search for that. Uh, let's see. This was in Forbes of January of 2017, which was exactly seven f- seventy five years ago. Starbucks discontinues beer and wine sales at regular stores, but looks at adding alcohol to its high end stores. Okay, so uh, Have you seen the pricing at a Starbucks? They're all the high end store. Well, that yeah, that's true. Or it's funny when you go to a uh, when you go to Noda and get a hop, drop, and roll on draft. It's like five bucks for a pretty generous pour, and then the tall boy cans at a restaurant are like eight and nine dollars. I'm like, uh, that's pretty pretty fucking terrible, actually. They're trying to encourage uh, drinking strongly at home. Well, I mean, we do enough of that, and we drink out. But do we have a drinking problem? I've seen Airplane. I, I could quite have wanted to. <laughs> I just don't want to, man. <laughs> I just don't want to. So High Wire's out of, uh, that's Asheville, correct? If I recall correctly. Uh, I don't know yeah, where. It's right there on the can under your alcohol by volume, 8%. Yes, I love my coffee. Eight percent. By the way, Kirkman listened to episode one, I believe, and he promptly had to pick his ass up because he he's had to explain myself to my coworkers. Did you see that text? <laughs> yeah, the uh, the uh, Canapolis. Yes, could pot. Yeah, that was, I swear, work is never done. I'm having somebody, uh, somebody asking me about something at work. Well, uh, how about they uh, don't ping you right now? And what had happened is uh, he works south of Gastonia because local podcast. And uh, explaining to someone that Kannapolis is Gastonia North. What's that? Uh, The more rough and tumbly cousin of your nearby villages. I have had some good times. Milltown turned meth town, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, you do see a lot of those old mill houses where every house looks exactly the same. And then, well, what do you know? And now, what you know? Everyone talks like this. <laughs> and every, <laughs> it's kind of sounded like Edith Bunker. <laughs> oh, Archie! <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to go with uh, Mill House Van Housen from The Simpsons. <sighs> it was uh, John Oliver's British Mill House. <laughs> he gets called British Mill House. <laughs> Oh boy, uh, I need to make it up to High Wire. Um, I think the only the only Asheville beer, uh, the only places I've been are. Didn't we stop on the way back from a cabin trip at Asheville Brewing? Yep. Because, what's a- it? ABC. Who? Um, Jeter. That's right. It's a Jeter. Does he still work up there? I don't know if you were friends with him. Don't on- know. Uh, I am, but I haven't kept up with his whereabouts. But it was funny as hell to see former saucer manager now managing beer and pizza joint in Asheville. I was like, you know. That's not a bad spot to have. It really isn't because you have family up there, and yep. we should totally we need to we need to make a boys beer trip there since we do it in Bryson City. We've done it twice. We need to go to Asheville now. Then my uh, Friday nights are ostensibly freer now. That is true. We need to, well, actually we do need to find out when the next Nana Halo Trail Magic is because then we might can just make a really nice trip out of it and stop by Asheville on the way. That'd be a hell of a deja vu. 
Oh yeah, deja vu all over again. So much fun. (laughs) Those are really fun trips. But I think this time we got to take Kirkman with us. We're gonna sub uh, Matt. (laughs) We're subbing Matt for Kirkman since Matt's a bit kind of far away from that sort of thing. I wouldn't put it past him to travel eight hours for beer. Uh, If anybody would do it, he he definitely would. Hey, Matt Lemon. Shout out to Matt Lemon, who's not listening to this. He's much too busy (laughs) at Publix, getting fucked over by the man and sent. To every coastal South Carolina city known to man. Uh, he took that a lot better than I would have. And I imagine you would have. Well, at least he didn't sign that Don't, paper. Darn, at least I'm at the beach. Mm. <laughs> well, you did say it's one more beach job than we've got. So let's let's explore... Let's explore. Was like, I was born in Wellington, but uh, don't remember the day I spent there in my first eh, two years. <laughs> That's you like your your profile doesn't say you're from Wilmington, does it? No. Yeah, my, um, I could put Hickory on mine, but I was only there for two two or three years, so I'm not really from. Let's see, Asheville breweries. I don't think we could name them all if we tried. <laughs> they're, they're they're popping up about can't as fast. Even name all the ones I've been to. Okay, there's there's a bit. Okay, here we go. Asheville Brewing, uh, obviously, and then a place that's dead to us. Uh, then this is wicked man. Yeah, and then Green Man Breweries listed twice. There's only one tap room, but they're listed twice. French Broad River Brewery, never never heard of that before. Uh, Catawba Brewing of, of Biltmore Village, which I didn't know existed. I thought Catawba was just yeah, here I and went to. Not that brewery, but the restaurant next door to it for some really badass brunch. Hmm. What was on the menu? Or how many years ago was this? Mm, not one. Oh. I'm sure it was good. <laughs> I was, it, I was, thought- it was after the last uh, Bryson trip. We stopped there. Met my cousin for lunch brunch there. That's right. That was okay. That, that was that was right before the uh, Blue Ridge Parkway death trip. Oh, uh, that's that's right. Okay, I got you. I got you. Uh, Twin Leaf, New Belgium, uh, Burial, which I always hear good things about. The actual tap room had a couple of their beers, but never been. To, have you, you haven't been to Burial either, have you? I give it a maybe. Um, do, 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 do. Lexington Avenue Brewing. Give you one guess what that what road that's on? <laughs> which well, Lexington? I actually went there uh, for my birthday years ago, back when we were still doing Thanksgiving in Asheville. That was a fun time. I think they should go back to Thanksgiving in Asheville, for your sake. At least, you yeah. know, extra stuff to look at instead of, you know, Greensboro. Uh, they've got Highland Brewing, uh, which we have been to. Been a long time since I've been to it. Um, they renovated sometime between November and now, and also rebranded, but I'll miss their little Scotsman. Yeah, well, I think we covered that last time, too. I missed the little Scotsman, too. Uh, Wedge Brewing, which I have not heard of that one. Um, blah, 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 brewing company. Pardon? B H R A M A R I. Brahm, Brahmari? Sure. Br- Brahmari. That sounds very Brahmari. Indian. Yeah, sounds very Indian. Didn't know the Indians liked their beer. I do know they love cows, but didn't know they. Didn't and know. cricket? Gig. Oh my God. Every time, every time you see a cricket game in North Carolina in a park, any park, it's always a bunch of Indian folks. When the hell have you seen a cricket match? Last time we met at um, met the S two thousand guys at the uh, park on the south side of town. We always cruise in together, and um, that's that was in there. They were playing. Uh, there was like a big group of people playing cricket. They're they, they always have they're having a great time. I mean, it looks fun. I don't understand any of the rules. Um, just kind of looks like straight line baseball instead of because you can hit the ball and any it's not like there's foul balls i don't think it's anytime you make contact with it wherever it goes balls in play i think that's how that works not really a cricket expert more of a grasshopper expert uh here's another place that's dead to us the funkatorium womp womp yeah that that was a stillborn let's face it yeah ugh, yeah well especially for us <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry guy um Sweeten Creek Brewing, uh, Sweeten, uh, Sweet and then E N, Sweeten Brewing or Sweeten Creek Brewing, on Sweeten. Stephanie Quick Tanner, Brewing. <laughs> Archetype Brewing, uh, High Wire, the Fear, the Fear Factory album. <laughs> I haven't listened to much Fear Factory. Should I listen to more of them? 
Uh, how angry do you feel? I'm all right for now. I have my I have my best buddy in front of me, and I'm drinking beer. You're not in the state of mind to listen to Fear Factor right now. I'm sorry. I'll give it time. <laughs> Here's High Wire Brewing Big Top, and when you go to that, you get to see Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> And then high wire. Do they serve a big adventure as well? I hope so. High wire brewing regular on Hilliard Avenue. Upcountry brewing uh, wedge at Foundation uh, Hillman brew oh, Hillman beer. That's also a brewery with artisanal breads and house cured meats. Well, what are we doing today? <laughs> Drink to my heart attack. Ginger's revenge. Pardon? A- yes, Ginger's revenge. Is this run by an angry Viking? It may be, but you know, I gotta tell you, the uh, the ambiance doesn't like it has any soul. <laughs> Oyster House Brewing Company. Uh, totally looks well, like somewhere well, to you're, beach. You're still a thousand miles away from the Rocky Mountains. Ah. <laughs> um, I've had those. They weren't bad. Yeah, they have a really unique taste. <laughs> What you eating? Uh, cow nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Mills River Brewery. Uh, Blue Ghost Brewing. That sounds cool, and I'll be honest with you. These the, last few are getting really obscure. I've never heard of any of these. Well, the picture the picture um, of Blue Ghost Brewing actually kind of looks like a place you would see on Ghost Hunters. It just has that weird, foggy ambiance. Well, apparently... Somebody's got a favorite Pac-Man villain. <laughs> Sierra Nevada, uh, which we've been to a million times and plan to go a million more. The Meadow at Highland Brewing. Brother Joe's Coffee Pub. Coffee Pub. Steve, have you ever been to a coffee pub? As he checks his phone if he's been to a coffee pub. Oh, Kalen might have gotten robbed while getting an oil change, so that's fun. What? Like... Like money robbed or like robbed like they charged her too fucking much money? Uh, Like somebody rifled through console glove box and trunk, but she's not keeping anything in the car anyhow. Yeah. Uh, so by the way, don't go to MTB ever. Which one? Matthews? Concord. Uh, okay. She the one except that way. And uh, they, they fucked up last time to get two for oil changes. So she took it there to get an oil change and... Um, well, if she's getting robbed in the process, well, fuck those guys. Uh, yeah, big time. Well, well, hell. The uh, the one at Matthews is the one that gave me my uh, Michelin tire. They've been really good, but um, the tires and the service, I didn't have a, I didn't have too much of a problem there. Um, but I'm not a woman either. Like they tend to kind of fuck you over if you're a woman. So, well, that sucks. Send her my regards, please. Whenever she gets back to you. Now we got to bring a lighter note into this too, because now we're talking about that. I swear, like, this is the third person that's asked me a fucking work. Like, I'm trying to hear it and have a good time, and I just keep getting texted by. So, so much for don't ever use your phone during a podcast. Whoops. <laughs> Left my ringer off, but it's blinking at me. That was my attention. <laughs> I know I can't just I cannot watch a light go. I can't I can't like not answer it. I have to kind of see. Uh, back to it. We got Thirsty Monk, which I have a sticker on my guitar case from, but I've never been there. Emily has. That's one of the rare places Emily's been that I have not. You haven't been to Thirsty Monk, have you? No. Uh, or did I? Is that a beer shop or brewery? It's. Oh, it says brew pub. I don't think it's a brewery. That that may have been the one I went to about the time I turned 30. So that was a thousand years ago. (laughs) One year ago? (laughs) Uh, Green Man Brewing. Ben's. Wait, again? Yep. (laughs) The tasting room this time. Uh, Ben's Tune Up. Hip Sake Brew Pub with Asian Fusion Eats. Ooh. That. Might as well just keep writing stuff down on places to go. Yep. And yet another reason we just need take to take that article with you. Well, this isn't an article. This is just Google Maps. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, it's gone, motherfucker. It's already gone. I know where to find them. <laughs> yeah, I'll just 
Just go two hours west and um, walk a block. You'll find one. Yes, and you'll get to play our favorite game to play, uh, that and in Noda and Plaza Midwood, hipster or homeless. <laughs> kind of like going oh, down. I thought of the shitty parking roulette. <laughs> that that or playing the game that I like to play in uh, on an interstate trip. Is it cop or a black dude? Because <laughs> <laughs> it seems like our, uh, our brother friends do like to drive... A f- Whatever car is a cop car. It used to be Crown Vicks and Caprices, and now they like to drive Chargers. So I, I don't, I don't know why that is, but uh, I don't know why that is. Irony loves company. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that saying before. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I don't know why. Well, I'm a instead f- of misery loves company, mine says hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not miserable anymore. You have a better schedule. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I have the ostensible weekend, so uh, now now I can start you know Friday afternoon instead of Saturday afternoon. So yeah, it's still very much the swap of Kalen's and my sleep and work schedules. So at least that evening block's free-ish. That can definitely take a toll on a relationship. People don't realize. I mean, you, that's why so many you see so many people working in retail management that uh, are divorced or you know, just you. You work opposite schedules. Hey, what do you know? You start to kind of drift apart a little bit, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen with you guys. You guys are great together. You're so cute. Am I going to be in the wedding? Can I be in the wedding? Yes. Can I be uh, the ring bearer? Yeah, just uh, don't swallow the ring, Mr. Mayhem. (laughs) I'm glad they uh, they brought that guy back because I think they're probably my favorite insurance. I'm kind of sick of flow from Progressive. That's gotten a little... Beyond strange. It's a bit long but, in the tooth. But I'd rather see her than the talking insurance box. I hate that fucking thing. <laughs> it's like, get, this isn't a 1990 software package. What the hell? No, die in a fucking fire, you little shit nugget. Uh, your Risco beer company. Um, that doesn't even the look... The old Lamborghini? This looks like a, a furniture Durango. store that's going out of business on the inside. Uh... Whistle Hop Brewing Company. Bold Rock Hard Cider, which I didn't realize Bold Rock was in Asheville. That makes two of us. I <clears> thought <throat> that was more boonish. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm wrong before, and I'm planning on being wrong again. I'm going to say this incorrectly to get under your skin. Pisgah Brewing Company. Thanks, Thomas. <laughs> Thirsty Monk Sal. You don't pronounce it as an A. You pronounce it as a U. It's Pisgah. I, I like it backwards. It's Hag Sip. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be forever be the church I grew up in. Mount Hag <laughs> Sip. <laughs> we got Noble Cider. Uh, it looks uh, Asheville Distilling. You have to build it yourself. May, oh, I hope so. It's like an IKEA. The uh, like a Noble Car. <laughs> yeah, that too. Asheville Distilling Company. I did not know they had a distillery. ADC. <laughs> <laughs> they should team up ABC, ADC ABC and ADC present to you The a, a Bon high, Scott tribute AB, An ABV MTV LOL WTF BBQ BMW <laughs> Speaking of WTF It looks like some several people are coming out In support of Mr. Hardwick Now So I don't know if said lady is Nucking you futs said, You said nerd is awful funny but yes Ah oh, fuck me <laughs> Not now all right, I'll wash it first. Hey-o. That's what I usually say to somebody. Just, Fuck, man, just wash it first. We'll be all right. <laughs> uh, oh, you want to go in dirty? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we got viewer questions. This one comes. Who the fuck's viewing this? Like, <clears throat> all right, yeah, here's our, here's our image on YouTube. That's <laughs> it. Listener questions. That seems more appropriate. Is that gooder for you? Oh, well, yes, it is. That's still not... Uh, Word, but this still isn't a, what was an orange juice commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you look Ooh. good. You look gooder. Ooh, Sunny oh, D. You. All right. Ugh. We got purple stuff and blah blah blah. Yeah, Sunny D has like a million calories and a million grams of sugar. It's funny to see that they think that's a healthier alternative to water. It's got vitamin. <laughs> that's true. And water. I don't drink water. Fish fuck in it. The uh, f- question comes from Troy Johnson, my tattoo artist. Hey, Troy Johnson. With the popularity of street racing because of TV shows, what should be the rules for setting up races? So, I have... Uh, 
make friends with the cops so they can block off the road for you. <laughs> Either that or be able to outrun the cops, uh, one or the other. I was I was <laughs> gonna say um, make the have test and tune nights at the drag strips more frequent and have them cheaper. Because uh, I mean they're they're fairly cheap now, but I think you have to. The last time I went, I took the Conquest. It's been a million years ago. <laughs> so that's at least five plus since now you had the S that long. Yeah, it's going on six plus. I, no, I sold it in 2011. Seven years. I haven't had it for seven years. I was just trying to think how long you've had the S2000. Five, yeah. I bought the S2K and the Jeep within two months of each other in 2013. Um, S2K was in June. Jeep was in August. That was a fun trip with Mr. Bob Testa. <clears throat> uh, so I, I can't believe it. it was a man that sounded like Bobo Walters. <laughs> the uh, I think that you should, they should make the test and tune nights a little cheaper. Um, either that or like I have beat the cops night where the cops bring the uh, some of the squad cars see if you can outrun the cop cars. But they should do that and they should really crack down on street racing. Um, and I'm not saying I've never done it, but it was it was stupid then. It's stupid now. You can hurt innocent people. Um, that's that would be my only thing is just to open the drag strips more frequently. But then you're gonna have to have have people there working and, and you know, who knows how many hours those folks want to work, but Hey, we're going to bring jobs by bringing street racers into the drag strip and, or even that in road courses. I mean, they had a lot of uh, pop up. Uh, what is it? Uh, the, uh, the ro- little road courses. I've, I'm drawing a fucking blank. Um, like a VI autocross. Thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, back in the day when Asheville still held mm-hmm. Bell share, there was an autocross mm-hmm. held just, south of downtown there that was i think that's been the only autocross of witness that was cool it it's really like i know it's fun and i just said gerald and mark try to get me to to go out all the time i was like well how much will it be to go to vir for the weekend he's like it's probably gonna be about a thousand dollars it's not too bad i'm like yeah i mean that isn't too too bad but i can either spend my weekends making money or spend my weekends spending money and maybe breaking a car uh, you know, uh, every night on 45 with construction going on, they've already got asylum picked out as they're doing construction on it. So <laughs> take the S2000 out, have a time. I've already spun it out one time and hit something I wasn't supposed to. I don't want to do that again. Eh, the cones will be more forgiving. The guardrails, not so much. No, the tree. It was the tree I hit. I know. Just trying to think of what's, what's going to exist now. <laughs> it's a lot of fun driving the work at the night and like, oh, good. They've got, you know, the left two lanes blocked off as they're repaving and painting and whatever have you. Mm-hmm. So here's another. Uh, what I want to see is closed circuit 45. Ooh. To, in fact, enact <clears throat> the Mecklenburg ring. So not some sort of, you know, event I participated in three years ago was the we're not calling this a race around 485. Race around 485. Go ahead, folks. Beat my time of 55 minutes. Mm-hmm. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> I, D- did I tell you that I was running uh, Map My Ride as well as Waze at the same time so I could get waypoints? Like, so every minute would tell me you know, distance passed and speed at time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's just say the best speed we'll say was. 12 o'clock. <laughs> Go ahead. Check your speedometers, folks. Your mileage will literally vary. Yes, mine would be 50 <laughs> <laughs> on the, in the Jeep. And in the S2000, it wouldn't be a speed at all. <laughs> it would be an RPM. And it would be red Deal. line. Red line's at 12 o'clock. Okay. I kept thinking it would go further over. It did. The AP1s did. The AP1 had the full sweep. Yeah. And then the AP2s with the lower red line, albeit a, a thousand RPMs lower, they shortened it. Only eight thousand RPM, the horror, or eighty three hundred or something <clears throat> like that. Fuel cuts at eighty two hundred, I think, but it red lines at eight. But um, it's really cool because when you hit your rev limiter, it's kind of like a shift light because when it hits your uh your red, the red part of the red line flashes to let you know to shift, which is neat. It's a that's a neat trick to have. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> question number two from Mark Kanisny from soon to be Denver, North Carolina, the second coolest Denver I've heard of. Uh, topic to discuss. Uh, no, third, second coolest was the last dinosaur. Never mind fourth because I'm on a Rocky Mountain high. 
<laughs> that John. <laughs> John. I thought the Rocky Mountains would be rockier. Yeah, man. John Denver's full of shit. <laughs> All right. The appropriate volume for a venue. Evidently, uh, Mark and Miss Lovely Genevieve were at uh, a local wine bar here who I've known to have a run in with their manager. He says, uh, one person, do not be crazy loud. You're a lone musician in a small wine bar. Uh, no conversation could be had. <laughs> and that's saying something because you've been there. How loud did the guy, why did they let him play that loud for one? And two, why would you? We get complimented all the time about our volume. Those lights, the perfect volume. It's not too loud, not too, you know, you can still have a conversation, but we can still hear. So the appropriate volume for that is 99 decibels. <laughs> I can't measure this because my phone cuts out at 85. <laughs> Fuck you, Samsung. <laughs> uh, I'd rather have a Samsung than this piece of absolute dumpster <laughs> trash. Uh, let's see. It's like, I, I'm curious as to measure this, but I'm not going out to eBay to get my decibelometer or whatever have you. To <laughs> the decibelometer. Decibelometer. <laughs> new word, new device. <laughs> my loudness testing equipment. Now, is the airport really 140 dB? I don't know, douchebag. <laughs> That's what dB stands for. <laughs> or no, douchebag is, is douchebag one word or two. Yes. Okay, cool. Nope, but I, we, I think when calling somebody it, one is going to suffice. There's a character limit here, said no one ever. Because, hey, that person probably has no good character. <laughs> nope. But uh, if you're out at a place, your ideal volume would be to, if you're sitting 10 to 20 feet away from the musicians, as long as you can hear somebody talk at a normal tone of voice, then you're loud enough. And if, when in doubt, sound check your first song, man, and then ask him, ask the bar people, the bar people. How, uh, not the lawyers, if, if the sound's okay, and then turn the master volume down. Don't, don't drown everybody out. I know you like to play and you feel happy that you sound good tonight, but turn it fucking down. I want to bust everybody your drums, yo. Oh, you're already out. Surprise. <laughs> you know, you can go run and get us some new, uh, get my chicken cordon blue on and, uh, that tastes like I'm thirsty. You too, huh? I'll be done by the time you get back up here if you want to go grab us something. All right. What you feeling? Well. You want to, you want to try shitty Italian Heineken? We can do that, or we can do this. We can do the Sriracha in a little bit, unless you want to do the Sriracha second. Whatevs. We need to get glasses for the Sriracha. I'll go, I'll go out of the bottles in the meantime. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, ducky. I'll keep the people entertained. How about that? Good luck. <laughs> well, I made you do it last time, so now it's my turn. <laughs> it did make for some good entertainment, though. Thomas said he's not going to call today. I said, yeah, says you. He said, if I call, don't put me on, man. I'm like, I'm going to put you on. That's how it fucking works, man. When you call somebody when they're recording, that's how it works. So I got to tell you guys, this um, this Orchata 10W40 is super duper excellent. Um, it would be a, if you like, it's not as much coffee. It doesn't really taste too coffee you kind of get the um the frappuccino taste without getting the uh the coffee aftertaste to it so you get you do when it says brewed with vanilla almond cinnamon lactose and chocolate i mean it it means all that it's almost like a a milkshake and it bringeth all my gentle folk to the yard so steve's on his way to get us some new beers i don't know really what he's going to grab but uh in the meantime i will thank you all for listening to this and uh hopefully we can do this for a living, get us some sponsorships, and uh, further entertain you people with all of our uh, shenanigans and, and beer trips and, and car car talks. We're going to ha start having some guests fairly soon. Got to get me a new audio interface uh, and some more chairs. We're starting to run out of uh, places on this table to put our empty cans and bottles because we've been saving them since the last couple of episodes. And i got to tell you, it's getting kind of full and jingly in here but we just have to make sure we don't hit it. uh oh he's got the italian the uh, the heine the heine italian heine italian <laughs> it does kind of yeah that kind of looks like an italian heineken hopefully it, it, it'll taste the part too so it's going to taste like go ahead pronounce that <laughs> 
Semidorado. Gesundheit. 5% alcohol by volume. Berra de Puro Malto Premium. A Sicilian taste. Lager beer in a green bottle. Imported by GK Skaggs and Incorporated Irvine, California. <laughs> Orange County. Oh, boy. That's uh, all right. Let's try this. Cheers. <sighs> that tastes exactly like I thought it would. An Italian Heineken. Yep. Yeah, so uh, you think Italian beverages, you know, you, you think the likes of a mineral water, a wine, mm. an amaretto. Beer's not their strong suit. But no. to completely rip off the Dutch, that's not bad for a cheap Heineken knockoff. Is this the first uh, time in history that the Italians have ripped off the Dutch for something? <laughs> What do the Dutch make that the Italians don't? Tulips. <laughs> uh, well. And the, the Sons Jansen. Um, yes, Mr. Martinus. For the last three generations, I think three or four generations, they've kept that name. I do like that name. I like that name a lot. Hey, Mr. Brendan. Hey, Mrs. Katie, who won't be listening to this. <laughs> Hi, Simon. You shouldn't be listening to this for 20 years. Well, I mean, you got to start them young. I mean, when I bought the ad to promote this, it wouldn't take it. And I was like, why is it not taking this? And then it says it doesn't meet the requirements. I'm like, why? I have it set to um, target folks from 18 to 65. Oh, it has to do with craft beer. It won't let me target it to anybody under 21. (laughs) Yeah. Like anybody under 21. You know what? They should lower the drinking age to 18. Because if you're a, if you were an adult, because the argument the argument is you're not uh, mature enough to handle it, but you can get sent off to fight. You can buy cigarettes. You can blow all of your money on lottery tickets, but you can't have any booze. I should have had so much more fun when I was eighteen. Most definitely, of course, I didn't get card. You probably look roughly similar to now, though, don't you? <laughs> you look you look just like you do now. Magic of not having any kids and drinking all the time. It's working for us, man. Your mileage may vary, but it took me a while to figure out that uh, acronym when people would <laughs> post M&B? that. Yeah, it was like, of, uh, I was like, what Roman numeral is this? <laughs> they added the, the one. Year, the year 2005? <laughs> they added one, man. I don't think that's one, man. I don't think it's... Why did they think that was a good idea? Roman numerals? It probably didn't know any better. Yeah. Uh. We must go back in time and ask. This is actually not bad. It's it's a bit smoother. Heineken kind of has that after but, bite. Of, yeah, you you've been hitting the head with a skunk, and this is frankly a better Italian beer. Like this or the Moretti Rossi. Yeah, I could, I could actually drink those. Peroni, Udini, Standard Moretti. Forget it. Yeah, per- but, Peroni's. Like, Vile. I've got to be really in the mood for a beer and that be the only thing on tap. What is interesting about this is this is this 5 point percent alcohol by volume. 5 point. 5 point. 5 point percent. Not 0.5, not 5.0, 5 point Trailing percent. Trailing zeros. We no need uh, the trailing zeros. Qualitia superiore. I wasn't carried away. That's what it says. Yeah, well. Don't believe it. I don't know how to say that'll do in Italian. <laughs> Best before January 2019, so we're safe. Has a product. It's budget. a green bottle, so that is a real threat. It really does, yes. There is a reason, Sam. I had no idea until I got to more of a, a beer drinking age that Sam Adams has the brown bottles and tall six packs, so it can't get sun bleached. Sorry about that, Esteban. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Got another need to bump into as well. Hey, oh, oh my goodness! D- I did digging hear- the uh, Isle of Man flag on this too. Never mind, it's they both have like the triple legged look. The Isle, the, the Isle of Man, similar to that. Yep. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know homosexuality was banned on the island of Isle of Man. <laughs> Well, uh, you got to do something when you've got the most dangerous street race ever. That yeah, that is true. I think Clark or, uh, Clarkson was interviewing. Um, oh, what's that guy's name? Uh, he he's if, a. If it's Lewis Hamilton or I can't help you. No, it wasn't a race. It was a, a English. He was a. I think he's a comedian. Um, oh, 
damn it. He's he's gay, and they were talking about the Isle of Man, and he says, he says, I went, I love man. Not here, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he played. Uh, you know what? Hold on. I know what his um. He, he was on. Uh, the show Bones with uh, Aurora Boreanaz and uh, David Boreanaz. Um, Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry was on there for a couple. Of, and okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Th- he was he was talking about being driving on the Isle of Man. Is that accessible by bridge or uh, not? No. That was a good one. Because <clears throat> I know that. Uh, well, no. Hold on a second. You got the channel. But I don't know if the Isle of Man. You know what? Yeah, tr- tr- the channel will take you to France, but not the Isle of Man. Y- you've not been to Europe, have you? I've or no, you've been Ger- to Germany. I've been in Germany. That was three weeks pushing 20 years ago. Yikes. It was so long ago the Euro wasn't yet in circulation. <laughs> it was so oh, long oh, ago they had Marks. two flags. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. <laughs> I'm going to see. I'm not even going to search for it. I'm just going to zoom in. I I was in Bavaria, which was part of what had been West Germany, staying with a family who was of German heritage, but the sons were born in Romania. Ooh. They moved to Germany in 1987, and both parents were chemical engineers, so they're smarter than us. (laughs) Most people born in Europe are smarter than us, just because they have to be. They're actually taught, you know facts that they believe (laughs) Uh, Uh, i sincerely doubt that the isle of man is accessible by um any kind of bridge it it looks a bit too ambitious i mean the channel's pretty far but there's more people that are trying to get from the uk to europe and vice versa than there are people trying to get back and forth to the isle of man they just don't know man i'm gonna click on the isle of man and see what it takes me to it's not letting me. It doesn't want me to go at a, all. A kick-ass flag, a repressive <laughs> government, and the most dangerous road race ever. What you need to look up is Sealand. Ooh. All one word. Sealand. So S E A. L E N D. Is it like the diet version of Sea World? Just you wait. S- is it an island? Mm, not exactly. Do I need to go into Google Maps or? That will probably work too. Okay, I'm gonna go into Google Maps. Can't connect my ass. I'm like five feet from the router. The fuck? Did you pay your time tantrum bill? It's on autopilot. <clears throat> okay, there's Sealand. Right near Blaken. It's Bacon with an L. And Sandycroft. It's on the border of England and Wales. All right, is there something I should be looking for? Uh, Yeah, it's just what the hell it is. Sealand is a community in Flintshire, an electoral ward north to east Wales on the edge of the Wirral Peninsula. Do I need to keep Wikipediaing it? Yeah, the fact that it's not exactly an island is exactly what I wanted you to keep prodding. Um, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Apparently, your Google's defective. Let me check mine. All right. Well, yeah, I told you my phone's... Um, like the Usain Bolt of shittiness. Mm-hmm. So, man, this is a this is starting out to be an interesting podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a cool yeah, flag? You, you you wound up something in Wales that makes no <laughs> sense because what I was going for was, whoops, that a platform built during World War Two that has a family of, you know, three people living on it. I, I and like have tried to become their own nation on a man made platform from the forties. That but it's close enough that the sun could make it to mainland England to go party. Oh, that that's brilliant. I love it. I like it that it has the total amount of claimed area in kilometers and square miles. Point oh oh four point oh oh four square kilometers or point zero zero one five square miles of livable space. Yeah, <laughs> is not what it's land, a, livable space. Livable space. They're they're it trying to be concrete, steel, and hopes and dreams. This does not fall into the ocean. Uh, sorry, I gotta get my papers. Sorry. 
So for all you crazy kids out there, I like to write down taglines and such to put on the YouTube ch channel. Sealand. Is that the place where they torture the killer whales? Yeah, I hope so. I'm hungry. <laughs> Makes fish black again. Whale sushi. <laughs> Go on. Ooh. Uh, what, or that'd be whale tartare, actually. I mean, we can put that kind of sauce on there if you want to. Tartare oh, sauce. I don't know what I'm writing down. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see here. Yeah, this is actually a fairly enjoyable Italian beer, and that don't rarely say that. But they do; they're not known for beer. There's at all, Ger and whereas Germany's not known for wine, uh, unless you like Riesling. Do you want sugar-coated crack white grape juice that's going to get you buzzed and leave you the worst headache <laughs> ever? I didn't let, know they made. Let me show you it. Yeah, Riesling is the most common German wine style, if I recall correctly. I suddenly like the Germans taste a little better than I usually do. Interesting, because yeah. you know, if you if you liked white grape juice, like just that sweetness, that's roughly <clears throat> what a Riesling is. It is probably the opposite of a Pinot Noir. Ugh. I just can't. I, I'm. I don't know when you when somebody says your palate's not developed enough. I just think it's Stockholm syndrome. You just keep drinking it enough that you just kind of start liking it. That may be I, what we did with I, IPAs. Yeah, uh, that too. Like that's also how I became cab savvy. Like, well, I like those because Kevin like those. Like, hey, want some wine? Yes. It's like let let's get hammered. <laughs> it doesn't take long for sure, but a wine hangover is way worse than you know, a beer hangover. I've, I'm faring a lot better now than about a dozen years ago. I was at a wedding at Childress Vineyards in this state's Lexington. Uh huh. The next day, I wish for death and then more death. That was the worst Wrath of the Grapes ever. <laughs> this well, was this was total head in a vice and. I'm pretty sure I barfed my stomach out in hopes that I grew a new one with even worse acid reflux. I don't think so, it works. I don't think reincarnation works like that. Partial reincarnation. <laughs> Stem cell reincarnation. Interesting. Not in those eras. No. God, no. <laughs> Fuck, no. So, uh, what was the... F Science, technology, <laughs> engineering, and math research. <laughs> what was the first alcohol you tried? So, we're going to do that. And just to give you a heads up for thinking purposes, the first alcohol you, you tried, uh, the first beer you actually like drank and liked. Because, okay. you know, every time... So the first time you try a beer, you hate it. And then the worst hangover you've ever had. Okay. First alcohol, your first beer you liked, and All your right. worst time ever. Uh, first alcohol I can recall was trying Absolute Pepar out of the freezer growing up. <sighs> By the way, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is vodka spiked with, I think, black pepper. So this would make a hell of a martini. A hell of a Bloody Mary. Yeah, that's going to be more apt. Ugh. You um, like Bloody Marys? I do. Yeah, more for you. Um, but that on its own really made sneaking alcohol at the house really off-putting. Like, <laughs> yes, there's more here, and after trying this one, I I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Da, 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 I, da, no. I, I must have been 12 or 13 having tried that. Like, nope, that is <clears throat> not it. I didn't realize that. Uh, so you being 12 or 13 would have put that right around 1993. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that Absolute not had started doing weird yeah, the, the flavor mashups. I know they do now. I, like, I, I'm not entire. I'm not 100 as to when that was, but I figure if that, you know, sometime in the teenage years, and before my buddies were old enough to get it, and I could not yet. <laughs> there's just whatever's at the house. Hey, go go for it. See, try that. Well, this one bites back. <laughs> 
Can't imagine uh, what you could mix besides a Bloody Mary with that. What else? <laughs> nope. I'm drawing a blank. Unless you dip... No, I was going to say dip salt and vinegar chips in it, and then you'd have salt and vinegar peppered vodka <laughs> potato. <laughs> Maritage of... Uh, yeah, that'd be really funny if it was potato vodka instead. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> uh, pretty sure that's straight up grain alcohol. So my... Uh, my first taste of alcohol was a Milwaukee's Best when I was like seven or eight. Because by the time I was two, I could get, uh, my dad would say, go get me a beer, son. And then I would waddle over to the refrigerator and I'd go get him a beer. Uh, and then finally, by the time I was seven, I, you know, I was, you know, I was like, I want to try a beer. He's like, all right. Because you got to kind of know my dad. Uh, but I tried that and boy, I'm surprised I didn't get put off from, uh, from beer forever. The beast uh, is if that's milwaukee's best i would hate to see milwaukee's worst it's really fucking horrible but see i used to sneak uh brass monkey because my mom liked brass monkey to funky monkey from the abc store you don't know what that is i don't even know what that is oh my god I gotta i'm tell pretty you about sure it. that song's about something else <laughs> i think it is um Brian Kirkman just messaged me, so I'm going to tell you about Brass Monkey, and then I'm going to call him, and then we're going to have him on the, the podcast. <laughs> I went, I meant to search for Brass Monkey, and what did I start to type in Google was Brian Kirkman. <laughs> Brass Monkey drink. You drink Brass Monkey drink? You drink some fucking drink. Let's see here. Brass Monkey is a name given to... Oh, motherfucker. Hold on a second. Brass Monkey liquor. There we go. Not the drink. There's a drink called that, but uh, that's not what I wanted. Hublines Brass Monkey. Uh, made from a 40-ounce container of malt liquor mixed with orange juice. One part rum, vodka, and orange juice. It's actually pretty fucking good. Let's see what Brian has to say. <clears throat> you should have your callers write in. If you know how a, a bidet works, <laughs> email us at cbgpod at gmail.com. If you want to talk shit about a picture of a car, email it to us at if you want us to evaluate your beers, email us for a P.O. box. <laughs> Send you us your... P- Wait, you got a P.O. box? I when do not. Should start? I do not have a P.O. box. He, he texted you too. I think you got it. He was on the same thread as the uh, Canapistonia. That is that is right. Gastonapolis? Huh. Gastonapolis. Gastonapolis. That sounds like a um, a famous British actor. That sounds like what gave me acid reflux. <laughs> There's still time. Not smart enough ice. Brian Kirkman. Hopefully he can pick his phone. Fo- He's probably driving home, so it's 5.30-ish. <laughs> it's always fun to hear this. This is Brian. You're on the air. Hey, Brian. This is AJ and Steve. We're recording episode 12 as we speak. <laughs> well, I'm Cavendish as we speak. That's interesting. Why won't you guys do it? Tell Scott to say hi. Yeah, tell everybody we said hey. We like Cavendish. <laughs> so I'm glad that you're, you're recording me for posterity's sake. What can I do for you, sir? Nothing. We just got your text, and since we're recording, we figure it would be better for the viewers to hear the voice of the sexy man who uh, happens. Uh, we, we, we talk about all the time, so we wanted everybody to hear just exactly what he sounds like. <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, you will not get a chance to really hear what I sound like until I'm actually in your studio. And now that I have a job that keeps me in town, that's more likely. Plus, I have a uh, 2016 Monstro, I might be saying that wrong, from Noda, that I think we should enjoy, uh, um, you know, uh, together and uh, on the podcast so that, you know, we can really evaluate the quality between everything. Um, But we should also uh, try something in the exact opposite direction, I think. So... All right, what's the exact opposite direction? Well, uh, so usually when you go in, uh, Monstro is like a big bourbon barrel-aged delicious supporter that's, you know, thick enough to have a straw, a straw stand directly up in it. Or that's a garden we hose. do something, something light like a, uh, uh, 
I had something from Asheville the other time. Oh, it was, oh, you put me on the spot, but uh, this brewery, Finley. And they had a, uh, they had a wine barrel aged propel, and it was freaking insane. I may have got myself in trouble with it. I think if we do those two, that would be delicious. Now, I don't have the words because I'm a, I, I'm a brute type man without the fanciness to actually, you know, describe all the flavors of like cherry and chambord and fanciness. Just fake it till you make it, man. Apple enough. Yeah, as long as it's not red NyQuil. <laughs> Steve says as long as it's not red NyQuil. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, so uh, I think you should also let your viewers or your listeners, whatever the right words are, call in to your show. Maybe even, uh, you know, send an email you know, so you can make fun of their, uh, the various vehicles they had as childhood. I think that would be a good stick. That wouldn't be a bad idea, actually, and I think we have a, uh, I think we have an email set up, don't we? I think we do. I need to. I know I don't. Uh, we'll get right on that, but that does sound like a good idea. So uh, we uh, we've had a good uh, run here, Brian. We've had an Orchata 10W40 Imperial with vanilla, almonds, cinnamon, lactose, and chocolate. And we're drinking the second worst Italian beer ever. <laughs> Best, whatever. What in the world's going on behind you? Brewing. Sorry, I'm in, I'm in, like I said, I was in a brewery, didn't expect a call. <laughs> I had uh, music playing in the background, so I stepped outside, then trucks started to go by, and so now I feel like there's not really a good seat for me to be in to <laughs> have a nice, quiet recording site. Oh, that's all right. Well, I'll tell you what, man. You get back to it, and you hound them to book my band, and then I'll give you a sweet hand job if you get us booked. Different, uh, I don't really see a difference, but okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave your card um, at, the, at the front office and see if I can get the, the bartender. All right, that sounds good to us, man. Enjoy your day. Steve, say bye. Bye. <laughs> see you guys. All right, later. See you in Russia. Cabin Dish is, is a neat little place. Um, now, have you actually been to the brewery? Negative. It is in the old, uh, I believe it's a Pontiac dealership. So you could take the car back squirrel home. Squirrel Hill? <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, saying Sneaky Squirrel. Sneaky Squirrel. In, uh, Silva. Yeah, which you didn't care for too much, did you? Uh, no. I rather enjoyed it. I tried Bro- the everything. Brendan. Brendan didn't like it. Brendan didn't like it. I, I kind of don't. I, I, it's, like it, it's, you know, it's a lot of beer. It's mad decent. But they've got to do something about that mascot. That is some third grade bullshit for their mascot. <laughs> that's an he's MS not sneaky. paint. He's He's like, he's a, yeah, that's, that, yeah, y- y'all need better artwork. I got I, I don't and even remember. Cartoon squirrels are not my thing, but y'all at least need to upgrade to a Rocky, if not a Bullwinkle. Come on. Uh, well, it looks like we're never going to be going back there again. Well, that sucks. Permanently closed. I'm not above speaking ill of the dead, though. But, um, yeah, that... Shit. I haven't heard anything about that one closing. I, I didn't like, either. Just like, you no. Know, hey, Bane Brewing and, Cor- and Cornelius is closing. Like, when? Tomorrow. Yeah. Fuck, if I can make that. Yeah, that that is not a sneaky squirrel. That's a... Ugh. Wait, hey, look- so the website's still active? <laughs> yeah, and it oh, just says, we are closed. 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 Sing karaoke because we're closed. What? We are closed. It, no, it's, it says, okay. Sneaky squirrel. We are closed. We are closed. We are closed. Like us on Facebook. News and announcements. Karaoke. Tullagard games. We are closed. And then some people dancing. Well, that's that sucks. They shouldn't be dancing. Well, I mean, it is Silva. So the only one still standing in Silva is innovation is innovation because yeah, Heinzel like Mocken's going. Um, apparently, the guy behind Heinzel Mocken was helping another brewery out in nearby Dillsboro, mm-hmm. a town made entirely of pickles. Gross. 
uh, sneaky. I can't spell today. I'm going to their Facebook page, and I'm going to see exactly when they closed. Um, oh, no, back what, you. Two, three years ago we went. It was at least three years ago. Hey, well, here you go. They deleted their page. It's not even on here anymore, so that probably should tell you everything you need to know. No, it doesn't. I can't learn anything from a closed Facebook page. <laughs> And then Heinzel Machen closed last year, I think. They had really good beer. Yeah, that's, that's still the most impressive one. I, I tend to like innovation more than Heinzel. Heinzel Machen had the, um, they had the German style stuff, like pretty yeah. hardcore, which you, you likes the Germans. That said, I still want Old Mike to build an IPA. It's not authentic German style. I don't care. <laughs> Y'all get, get over yourselves. Well, they ought to have an old Mac. Get rid of Captain Jack because he's gross it's garbage. pretty fucking horrible. Well, Hornet's Nest is tolerable, but still not great. Is that their Hefeweizen? E- sure. Um, the Fat Boy is my favorite. The You said Mactoberfest awful fun. Mactoberfest is a close second. Um, but as far as Copper, it's, it's all mad, right. It's a mad decent Sam Adams. It's, yep. I mean, you could you could Pepsi challenge that in a Boston Lager, and I don't know if you would tell the difference or not. <laughs> Just depends which one makes you pronounce your R's more or your R's less. Why don't we have um, an offshoot of Old Mecklenburg? The Old Mac can keep everything it does now, and we'll have New Mecklenburg, and they have a bunch of new styles and IPAs and stuff that's not by the whatever the law is. Reinhardtsgebot. There you go. I think we should do that. We we can be you and I can be the chairman, CEOs, and CFOs of New Mecklenburg and beer be tasters. Mm. But doesn't it take money to make money? We're fucked. That was a lot of it. Yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> I did ask Tony uh, from po- who owns Poor Sixty Four. I said uh, you don't have to tell me a dollar amount. I don't want to prod you too much, but I said how much did it. Uh, was it pretty expensive to open this joint? And he said, surprisingly, no. But that is the magic of not having a kitchen and no food. So if you're just serving beverages, you, you don't have to really jump through a lot of those hoops. Like uh, you don't have to have a health, a sanitation score. You don't have to have one of those because you're not serving food. And uh, that uh, you just got to keep those lines clean. Mm-hmm. No skunk beer. Uh, and make sure you keep the floor vacuumed in any stray buffalo chicken popcorn. Which is dank-tastic, yep. by the way. And the kettle corn is fantastic. Actually, you know what? Whoever makes that popcorn and it's not them, they get... Somebody here in town makes it. Um, they, like, do homemade flavors. The Lance Corporation. Nah, not them, silly. The Lance Bass Corporation. It's fabulous. As it goes into space. <laughs> what a weird turn. If you would, no, you know what? I don't want to get. No, this is. I know. I know we talk about music, but I don't really want to delve into boy bands because that's no longer talking about music now, is it? No, that's not the right stuff. No, 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 <laughs> no. Oh, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> no, 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 uh, uh. Ah. All that the right stuff was about the moon mission. <laughs> <laughs> shit holy shit man i gotta i um i saved some of my orchata so i f- killed that so i could go back to the orchata because it was so damn good uh i got the Ital- oh you did too yeah about a drop crack it open i think instead of saving every beer we drink i'm just save every style because it's gonna fill up pretty fast uh, if anything all right duplicate yeah, there's a duplicate. There's duplicate. Mm, yep. Duplicates. Um, ooh, I heard some drama. You want to hear some drama? Some potential drama? Oh, I like, like comedy better, but whatever. Dramedy. Uh, it was an article about the, the coolest things to do in Concord. And I believe number two, and I'm paraphrasing, but uh, as near as makes no difference, I'm really not. It says, there's even a brewery. Yes, Cabarrus Brewing is in there. And somebody was like, hey, um, there's more than one. 
and there's more than one in your own parking lot, and they have better beer. But somebody had posted on a friend, and I'm not going to give it away. Um, I don't give away my sources. But somebody had posted. Well, they heard. It was Facebook, wasn't it? They they said that um, the people who run it, and now I know the owner of Cabarrus, nice guy, um, but another party said that they opened the place and they were trying to make it big enough, like big really fast, so they could get bought out by Inbev. That's what I heard. The head Same brewer thing. says, "No, that's not true. We don't, we don't want that to happen." Blah 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 blah. But I don't know. It kind of sowed that seed in my head, and now I'm kind of thinking, well, they did try to do it all big all at one time, so. It's still mad decent beer, uh, but it, it kind of the, the the person who wrote the article the it branch does it better. It irked because he got yeah, high branch I've there. Heard that, I've heard that as well. Twenty six acres is there. Mm-hmm. Commoners and you know, um, Red Hill, Red Hill, which we play at. Um, and there's the thing a new is one too, called Southern Strain in the works. Yep, and uh, there's one in well Harrisburg. Uh, uh, does Vortex Pioneer do Mill, it? Pioneer Mill Brewing, um, at the elementary school. Wow, hell yeah! I mean, what are they going to do with that building at night? You got to do something with it. It's a waste of real estate. Uh, but they didn't even have like Little Robert's place listed. That's the coolest fucking yeah, place to go. That's absolutely Robert Burridge, man. You're awesome. We love you. Um, it was funny with the first time I went there. I saw the menu and it had a, a picture of a dude. With like long hair and a tie dye shirt and a beard down to his knees as a caricature, and I'm like, that's a cool, uh, that's a cool logo. And then the guy who owns the place, Robert, walks out, and well, that's what he looks like. Well, it's like that's a pretty appropriate logo there. I need to play there again. They um, they haven't booked us in a while. Fun spot. That was a lot of fun. Something always interesting happens there. Like you know, have a homeless woman who wants me to do a charity show for homeless people or a wankster comes in there and asking everybody for cigarettes including me while I'm singing up there on stage and then another guy comes out of nowhere and pushes him down on the ground you're assaulting me I know I am you can get the fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> and then the cops came and the guy's explaining something to the uh, the cops about he pushed me down and they're like we smell weed on you and they frisked him and they found weed and then they arrested the guy so uh, moral of the story is if uh, if you're acting like an idiot and you have weed on you which is still illegal it should yeah. be but <laughs> like legal as weed just not that day <laughs> <laughs> the uh, do you see the the picture on uh, t-shirt hill it says legalize it and on the back it has a guy cutting a tag off a mattress. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they should. Uh, uh, and early Daniel Tosh, he had a bit about like, man, I can't wait for them to legalize weed, so then potheads will have nothing to talk about. <laughs> the uh, what was it? It was, it was um, in Half Baked, wasn't it? John Stewart's character. The, the ever seen the back of a twenty dollar bill, man? Yeah. Ever seen the back of a twenty dollar bill on weed? <laughs> And yes, it was him. Yeah, I, my, I think like my favorite. before he got huge. Yeah, my favorite weed-related uh, uh, comedic bit was uh, was David Tells. Uh, he's like, I was backstage uh, uh, play, or I was backstage at one of my shows one time, and I uh, had a fan come up and go, "Man, Dave, I love your stuff, and you know, you want to grab it? You know, can can we hang out?" He's like, "Yeah, let's you know, let's hang out here." It was a pretty slow night, and and he's like, the guy like gets real close to me. He's like, "Hey, man." He's like he looks over his left and right shoulder. He's like, "You want to smoke weed?" And uh, and he was like, "Man, come on, man. It's it's illegal, but it ain't that illegal. I mean, you don't have to whisper it like that backstage. I mean, it's not like you got close to me and was like, "Hey, man, you want to go eat a bald eagle?" <laughs> I know it's illegal, but they taste like freedom. <laughs> the what the delivery was fantastic. You want a bald eagle? I can find a bald eagle before sundown. Oh. <laughs> Or the the shirt that has the the one that has the long hair. It says "fuck bald eagles." <laughs> <laughs> if you do want to see a funny picture, though, have Toby show you his high school, senior picture because he has hair down to his shoulders. Damn! Oh, it's fantastic. It doesn't even look like him. It kind of looks like Mike Starr <laughs> when he was alive, obviously. <laughs> but 
It's it's a Mike fun. Star, by, Mike Star now. Long hair. Looks kind of like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> Uh, I used to watch that shit when I was like, like a grow, like growing up as way too young to probably be watching it. I do, I fond memories. Were your parents pretty uh, lenient about what you watched, or were they pretty strict? Were sometimes th- yes, sometimes no. And I didn't have HBO in the time that Tales from the Crypt was on, so <laughs> instead I watched the diet version of it. Are you afraid of the dark? That yeah, it was yeah, it was, that it was, was like, similar concept, but you know, much more kid show than not, but. There's some cool stuff on there. Yeah, it. Uh, I distinctly remember my nieces and nephews watching "Are You Afraid of the Dark" with me, and uh, they had they remember the episode the Manaha. It was like a Bigfoot looking fucker. They were terrified of it, and every time it would come on, I would just say the word, and they would start screaming and crying, and then I would get in trouble. But I think I, I've found the license plate for your Jeep, Manaha. I should that or. Uh, the most appropriate license plate in today's digital age with all the social parasitism, Mm -hmm. unfollow. (laughs) I was thinking more of a a song off of... uh, Do Not Tailgate doesn't fit. Or Song of Jar of Flies, Say Goodbye, Don't Follow. (laughs) That's a fun song to play live, too. That's really fun. Uh, By the way, Allison, have you heard any of Allison Chains' new... A little bit here and there, and my initial thought was, I do not like this nearly as much as her 90s stuff. I got to, this will be the one time we disagree on stuff, because I okay. do. Because William Duvall, he's not Lane Staley, but he doesn't have to be, because he's a productive musician, he doesn't have any drug problems, He's he plays guitar way better than Lane played. Granted, people will say there's no there's no grit and the soul is not there anymore, and I'll give you that all day. But if William is good and and I know I'm not saying you said it, um, well, I'm not saying you said it, but a lot of people are like, you know, it's not the same, it's not as good, and I'm like, if it's good enough for Jerry Cantrell to have William Duvall playing with them then you should probably just suck it up and listen to it. Because <laughs> the new stuff's actually really good. It's very, very sludgy. It's back to like the... Um, it's like a mixture of dirt and three-legged dog. Like the newest stuff I've heard is really fucking good. Jerry Cantrell's like 52 now. We're all getting old. I don't think we should do this. <laughs> the, the, the whole age thing uh yeah that, that that's how this works i'm like, fucking if, over it man if, if you're not dead yet yeah that, no the t- time march is on i'm over it i'm over i'm over getting older i just want to stay the same 32 is perfect like being in your 30s is perfect i'm not afraid of 40s i'm not afraid of aging but 30s is perfect you get treated like an adult we both know the truth about that. <laughs> they call me sir. I know. Oh my god, doesn't that hurt? Wait, what? Doesn't that hurt? Uh, god I, damn it, that fucking hurts. <laughs> bullshit. I'm not wearing a shiny suit of armor. <laughs> that would be sire, wouldn't it? Whatever. That's sir plus an E. That's even better. <laughs> sire. It's like, pardon? <laughs> pardon me. While you burst into flames. They did a um, still of that song. Uh, it's a, well, Beato, Rick Beato did the uh, "What Makes the Song Great" of "Pardon Me," and it was really, really good. He, it's, it's such you need to watch this. Although you would be like, uh, well, you could listen to. It. I guess you could, you could stream. You got Wi-Fi at work, don't you? I've got the unlimited interwebs. I can do whatever the hell I want, so long as they've got their stuff. They don't much care what I do. Boy, that's the truth, isn't it? Bob's still going strong, right? Yep. How many more years? He'll be 65 next month. He's aged quite well. Is it that Nick's DNA that does that to you? Yeah, and him smoking for 30 years somehow didn't completely backfire. (laughs) How long is it? So, 15 or so, he's been hooked on Nicorette. Well, you know what? It's it's been a hot minute. (laughs) I didn't realize he I didn't know he smoked at all. Because my dad's smoked. Yeah, it's it's been a while since he quit. Jesus, he'll, he'll have like the occasional like cigar on the golf course, but like he's off cigarettes. That's that's really good. But yeah, he's so he's got a permanent nicotine addiction, but yeah, he, he hasn't smoked in a really long time. Well, nicotine is just kind of like high dose caffeine, isn't it? Just it gets the stimulant and such. So I mean, 
quite quite a bit less uh, bad for you than inhaling all that shit. I still want to get some edibles. Mountain trip? <laughs> Confirm nor deny. Yeah, I will be vacationing in Colorado. Yes. I'm just never... Uh, I've never done any sort of THC because I'm already hungry and sleepy all the time. So I don't really want to magnify this. Fall asleep eating a you burrito. You just... chase those waterfalls? <clears throat> Please stick to the rivers and the lakes you used to. We were thinking about having a uh, learning an R and B set for for our sets, and then having an '80s set of new wave stuff. We thought about doing that, but uh, Toby's schedules. I'm, we're not even going to pretend Worse. like it's wonky, like as wonky as yours. Yeah, L- Lace Line's <clears throat> fairly consistently wonky. Instead of open, close, open, close, middle, open, close, yeah. vacation, vacation, open, close, open, close. What the fuck? Yeah. God damn! I need a vacation. Chicago's still on the list of uh, possible destinations, but uh, good news, bad news. M's birthday's still in four weeks. Yeah, I'd say she's not listening to this anyway. Um, I think I know what I'm going to get her for her birthday. Uh, she, a, if not a trip to Chicago, a Chicago CD. Roll the clock back further. Chicago Transit Authority. <laughs> Uh, or the most awesomely depressing band from Chicago, Local H. Ah, the the my favorite duo. If I was Eddie Vedder, would you like me any better? I've only heard Bound for the Floor. Bound for the Floor. They are equal parts weird, wonderful. Uh, Twelve Angry Months is pretty fantastic. They're not Mr. Bungle weird, are they? No. Okay. Uh, heavy Metal. Heavy metal bake sale is awesome, <laughs> if only for the title of it. That's uh, one of the screamier ones. But I got a feeling Scott Lucas, uh, the singer guitar man of it, is just a miserable dude and has made some wonderful art because of it. Kirkman just. But, but uh, if I look that Cro Magnon, <clears throat> I'd be pretty pissed off too. Yeah, well, uh, like between him and the singer from Three Doors Down. Like team him up with Phil Hartman's ghost to make the most amazing caveman band ever. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. <laughs> um, I think I've lost my train of thought. We were talking about cavemen. Was it the L train? God damn it! What were we talking? Because that's a transit in Chicago. That is true. It's, it's not really a subway because it's above ground. <laughs> yeah, six inch or twelve inch. Eighteen. <laughs> Ooh, it's the black subway. hey oh. <laughs> It's a subway in the hood part of town. That's how mass transit works. <laughs> Brian just texted me the information for uh, playing at Cavendish. Hopefully the 18th time's the charm, because I've sent so many fucking emails. By the way, if you're an aspiring musician and you want to start playing live, good luck. Uh, it took me a long time to get to the point where we're playing a lot live, but... Send out those emails and make those phone calls and go visit in person and talk it up because for every 50 emails you send back, you'll probably get one or two responses. I didn't say bookings. I said responses. Mm, 4% response rate. It's pretty It's pretty terrible. Uh, once you're in, you're it's in. It's also my favorite kind of milk. I don't know. I like... 4%? I like the 2, two and 1%. Uh, whole milk. I had a glass of whole milk while we were on vacation, or Emily did. She got whole milk, and I tried it, and I went, "This tastes like just straight heavy whipping cream." It's when was the last time you had whole milk? It's been a while. Jesus, it's um. You could cut it with a knife. <laughs> funny you mentioned that. Uh, one time I wanted to fix up some soup, I was out of milk, so mm-hmm. I used half and half instead. Did it turn out pretty well? This was the most incredible pota- cream of potato <laughs> soup ever. <laughs> <laughs> That might have also resulted in the only time I've broken a buck eighty, but still, it was delicious. Eh, you know, <laughs> I think I'm back up to one seventy again. Um, <laughs> oh, hi, me. Yeah, I uh, since the garage is done except for the floor, I've been kind of s- not doing extra not, not work. Not that bound for the floor. Ooh, full circle again. I just 
Not a good Aerosmith song. Not a good Doors <laughs> album either. Uh, no Doors album is a good fucking Doors <laughs> album. This was post Jim Morrison Doors. I don't even <laughs> think it was released in the U.S., but thanks to the Dread Pirate Ship, I found it. Uh, it's even weirder. I can't get that pirate ship to land on my bay. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it, but it just won't do it. Yeah, who knows? Well, I'm not as wor- I'm not worried about that at all. I'm just glad. Uh, by the way, if you're recording any audio, just don't uh, <laughs> save your project as and delete. D- d- long story short, Steve gave me a hilarious amount of room on the computer, and I filled it all up with. Everything I've ever recorded, that includes here, that includes album, everything I've rendered, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it saved all those WAV files and it filled up about uh, total, what, a terabyte and a half I hard drives? About one and a half is Neat. what it's in there. Like a, I think a three or four and a seven yeah. are what's in it. So it's it's clear now. Just uh, yeah, don't, don't save everything because then you're going to try to say something one day. It's going to say your hard drive's full. And I'll be like, ruh row raggy. Uh, well, that's taken three years to fill it all up, so there's that. D- there is that, but, uh, that, I mean, uh... If, if you got 200 bucks, I can point in the right direction for an 8 terabyte drive, but you might want to get two, you know, make backups. I think I'm good so now. So then you're out 400 bucks, so have some fun with this. I think I'm good. I gotta get a, a four-channel audio interface, um, so we can have guests, because that'd be a lot of fun. We might Tra- track days. We're track days. I bought another hard drive. What's up? <laughs> Why am I broke? It, mm. Well, I've been saving my music money for a special occasion, so I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I was thinking about taking Emily to Chicago. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Uh, she has been bothering me about going horseback riding basically since we met. She's always wanted to go, so I'm thinking about taking her horseback riding. I'm not crazy about the idea. I'm not afraid of horses, but... I'm not get a helmet. Don't Christopher Reeve it. <laughs> I can't be Reeve it. We need more beer, and I think we should go with Sriracha. What do you think? So Steve and I have rebeard. Uh, we <laughs> we were trying a rogue Sriracha hot stout beer, and yes, that Sriracha, the Sriracha rooster sauce. It's served cold. Very What's going on here. And Steve said it's four or five percent. Five point seven. Five point seven. So. It's yes, yeah, LS. Uh, it's LS one literage percentage. Please be red. It's not red. Hold on, we gotta get this pour on. Uh... I don't really think I smell the the sauce in there. I think it just smells kind of like a stout. But this is brewed with the sriracha hot sauce that's famous for going pretty well on every damn thing. Sorry, Franks. By the way, it's Thursday and it's wing night at uh, Dunwell's. I'm just putting that bug in your ear. Uh, Get out, get out, get out! Damn you, moth! Like I said earlier, folks, listen to Danny Gold, the moth, on the YouTube Laugh your ass off, and then use Q-tips violently. That's a uh, that's a sriracha that's a sriracha beer. That's what that is. <laughs> it's good. It's exactly what I thought it was gonna be. I put sriracha in my rogue, dedicated to the rooster. <laughs> Rome so sriracha guys, hot beer stout. Guys, how did episode 12 get taken off YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Made from Waifong original hot chili sauce and sun ripened rogue farm ingredients. Ready to drink with soup, sauces, pasta, pizza, hot dogs, hamburgers, chow mein, or anything you'd like to wash down with a spicy kick. Rogue, uh, brewed and bottled by Rogue Ales, Newport, uh, Oregon, 97365 USA. Uh, it's fucking really good, actually. <laughs> didn't didn't quite expect. Uh, I didn't expect it to actually be a little bit spicy on the end, but it is. I dig it. it it's definitely beer first, right you later. It's good though. I like that. I don't that's, know if you should pair what, that with wings. 
If you're going to eat hot wings, I don't think you should pair it with a beer that's spicy at the no, end. You don't, no, that would go well with a sweeter <clears throat> wing, though. Swing. Ooh. Whoa, sweet <laughs> beer yacht. <laughs> How episode 12 got kicked off part two. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other song? Shut up, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Shut up, Scooby-Doo. Oh, yeah. Shut up, Scooby-Doo. Shut up. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, I did see something funny, and I kind of want to talk about it. What the fuck is this? Oh, that's from my tape? guitar strings. Never mind. Um you duct tape your guitar strings? No, How'd that, that even work? That's not duct tape. Uh, it was... So Eric Clapton wrote a song where the chorus is literally the word cocaine. So what rap song are we going to complain about the lyrics to today? And I said, well, okay. that's Except that is the coolest song ever. It is. And the thing is, too, everybody actually played an instrument on that. A. Two... Shout out to Steve Nix. <laughs> Wait, uh, dude, I ripped that off of Home Alone. Oh, you did? A, 2, and D. Yeah, that shit's from Buzz and Home Alone. You should have went That's, A, 2, and 3. <laughs> that didn't exist in 1990, so I know which direction this is going from now on. Thanks for the tip. Anyway, who? Uh, the words of cocaine are telling a story about how cocaine is... Not the, probably the best way to solve your problems. Modern day rock. Haha. <laughs> Modern day, or rap, rather. God damn. Modern day rap is just the same, like, hose, hose, crack, beer, pussy, blah, 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 over and over again. It gets kind of old. I don't think there's any talent in that. But, Steve, you don't listen to any hip hop, do you? That's from the alts. Uh, don't know if I've told this on air. Go ahead. But I prefer rap from before I could drive and country before I was born, which means all my favorite rappers, all my favorite country singers are probably dead. I will go my favorite country singers and rappers were from the 80s and 90s. And then the rest of them, because... I don't know if I've talked about, but Blackhawk has really good music. They were a 90s country band. They all sang. The country band that gave us the Blackhawk edition to sell in the 90s? <laughs> so that was a thing? That was the thing. What was the trim level? What was what was the perk of having that? Tiny car with a Blackhawk on it. That's it? Gotta specify Blackhawk, not black cock on it. Aw. <laughs> Be if bigger than the car. hey <laughs> If I recall correctly, it was available in black, white, or red. This, this is you know, the <clears throat> most useless of information from this episode is here and now. Well, the the, word, the the animal, the hawk, if you add any color to it, it sounds like black hawk sounds badass. White hawk sounds badass. Red hawk sounds badass. And that's the mascot for Monroe High School because they were the Monroe Red Hawks when I was in high school, 1,000. 268 years ago. Shout out to Charles Jones. Charles listens to this too. The I think anim- he- Wait, the animator for Warner Brothers? Chuck no, Jones? no. The, the one I know uh, <laughs> is quite a bit younger than that. And he and I went to kindergarten together. Um, I want to say he asked us... While you're looking that up, I'm going to see if he asked us a question. Because I'm pretty sure he did. Uh Beautiful people. Yes. Beautiful people. I'm glad you were picking up what I was throwing down. Uh, activity. Enhance. 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 Have you seen the new one? Soup Troops 2? No. Yeah. Well, Charles did make a... It says, thanks, guys. I know what the electric slide is about now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I told Emily, she's like, oh my goodness, we used to dance to that in middle school. What, the brass monkey? <laughs> Here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> brass monkey. <laughs> but I do. For some reason, trying to find information about the Black Hawk edition is few and far between. Boogity, 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 boogity. Boogie woogie. 
Uh, you know, I could have had an 85 Tercel wagon as first car, one of those four-wheel drive ones. That's cool. Uh, basically the one for Breaking Bad, only in green instead of faded red. Uh, but the transmission went out. And apparently trying to replace a transmission one of those 15 years later is impossible. Because <laughs> that was a proprietary, proprietary six-speed transmission in this 63-horsepower <clears throat> six-speed car. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, you just have to make it a six-speed, but the first three gears are auto, and the last three gears are manual. <laughs> Hybrid transmission. <laughs> uh, what are you looking at? You did you see the Regal, the 2018 Buick Regal Tour X? Uh, I want that wagon with a stick, but it's it's a GM Outback. That's so pretty though. That is yep. really. Did you see the uh, one on Opposite Talk on their Facebook page? The uh, the the old Regal wagon. It was beautiful. Let me see if I can find that picture. That thing was gorgeous. <laughs> God, there's a lot of fucking burps on this one. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to go off camera with it, but yeah, you all know, you know how that goes. Or camera. We don't have a camera. You know how many people have asked us, though, if we're going to have a live feed? And I'm like, I, I don't think you want to see us just sit here and talk. We're not, I mean, we're, we're awesome to look at, but I don't necessarily think you want to just sit here and look at us talk. You could just listen to us talk. <laughs> um, what was I looking for? Opposite talk. That was it. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace to the sneaky squirrel. That's going to go on there. So so nothing nothing I, on the Toyota. I got nothing useful to tell this. It's just... Uh, for 1997... Uh, Dashboard revised rotary ventilation controls. All Toyota models had revised seat fabric and door panels. The Red Hawk and White Hawk editions were introduced in addition to the Black Hawk trim already offered, which came standard with air conditioning, 185 60R14 tires on Ooh. custom wheels, a rear spoiler with integrated brake light, and Hawk symbols to identify the special model. Interesting. A uh, picture? Not on here, but uh, ever seen the U.S. market to sell? Yes, it's it's it'll bitty, and it seemed the newer they got, the worse they got. Does that one from the '80s? That was cool as hell because that became the G- Jesse Pinkman mobile. That was the SR5 to sell wagon, a little tiny. No, Jesse well, uh, well, off of uh, Breaking Bad. Oh, okay, yeah, remember I. Hipster at heart. <laughs> haven't, haven't seen the well, show. Well, um, get over yourself, watch it, or find the YouTube video of when somebody made the entire TV series into a two-hour movie. Oh, Lord. It's better Scarface. Ah. I can't find the... the There's a lot of them. I can't find the uh, the Turbo Buick wagon that... Um, that I was looking for. It, I couldn't remember if it was on opposite tall, but it was it was the manual transmission. It was tubbed out. I mean, it was a fucking cool looking What's wagon. Tubbed out. Uh, so tubbed out means the back. That sounds like the worst plumbing maneuver ever. The back wheels. What they do? They'll take the uh, <clears throat> the wheel wells out and bore everything out to put the bigger tires. Okay. The big wheels and tires, um, so that they can fit up. Up in there. Okay. So when they say tub it out, they, that's what that means. I should have specified as if I five. And it's one of those phrases I've heard. It's like I don't know what's going on here. The more you know. Oh. Do, 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 do. oh. Let me blow your mind. I didn't text you about this, and I should have. I don't know if they're still in town or not, but a buddy of mine who used to work at On the Border is a. Uh, he's a bartender at. Uh, Pub 49, right, yeah, right in front uh, of Lowe's Foods. Well, it used to be Pier 49 on 49 in Harrisburg. That, yes. Uh-huh. Who walks in the other day who it happens to be in town for doing a short film about Dale Earnhardt Jr.? We talked about this group of guys in the last episode. Dun, 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 dun. 
Alex Trebek and his production crew? Why? That would be just as cool. The Donut <laughs> Media guys. Oh, shit. No, what? Yeah. I was like, what? You've got to be... And I didn't see it till late because I promise you, as soon as I saw that, I was like... When was this? Shit, I'm already late because I was totally going to drive been over there. It would funnier if Granny Max was still a thing. <laughs> but now apparently it's the fate. sunflower. Like it's something else now. Uh, again? Because I changed yeah. to Faith yeah. Bakery. It's like, well, I was like, well, you're not promoting the George Michael song, so I can't help you. But now it's something different. Yeah. Yeah, I was off that way, I don't know, a week or two ago. All right, so I'm so jealous that he got to meet him. It was James Pumphrey and Bart Biblingmeyer. The uh, I couldn't make these names up if I tried. <laughs> Those two, the guy who does the up to speed, and the other guy that does the uh, garage. The uh, yeah, the the guy on the, the left I recognize because he pops up with all like the stills of the videos. For, yeah, well, hey, we're talking about blah blah today. Neat. The they do because um, he ate all the donuts, didn't he? <laughs> They uh, do. Let's trend no subscriptions. Let me. I'm trying to. I'm gonna get it right before I have to correct it. I might as well just say it right the first time. Yeah, that guy. Yep. <clears throat> Pump free is his last name. What a cool last name that is. Um, but they. It's science garage. How'd you get? How'd you get your gas? <laughs> I pump free. <laughs> that they do. Uh, up how'd to you speed. get so buff? I pump free. He does that on Thursdays. They do. The science garage is how they work. So he does. He did differentials this time, um, and then another guy does. Well, you got a thing spinning this way, but you got to make something spin this way. It's it's pretty good. It's a pretty great series. I mean, you, I can actually like how they I mean, work it's manually. Probably, it's probably more entertaining than Engineer Explained, but that's also a fascinating one that you're not watching. I am watching it because he has an S two thousand. Ooh ew. <laughs> Which I'm still contemplating on keeping her, <laughs> keeping her selling. Uh, yeah. It's it, it becomes an easier decision when you realize it's paid for and it's mm-hmm. not costing me anything but oil and the oh, insurance and that's it. And not really that much insurance to be honest with you. What's funny is the people have gone from S two thousand to Viper first generation and their insurance go down because it's it's an older car. <laughs> Which is kind of backwards because the Viper has no ABS, no. That's, a, that's also a rare car. No airbag, no nothing, and it, the, the insurance is actually cheaper on a Viper. How would they get away with no airbag in '92? <sighs> door mounted seatbelt was this GM? Uh, <laughs> they did have a door mounted seatbelt because <laughs> like, that's how GM skirted that for a hot minute. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's that. Not how that works? Yeah, I don't. I don't know either. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a mutually exclusive like. We did this, but oh, we don't have to because we did yeah, this. No, if you've got this, the, the seatbelt release is an emergency only option. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Or it's an automatic seatbelt. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened? Uh, I got choked by my car again. How many cars have you had Power. with an automatic seatbelt? Zero. I've had two. Both conquests had automatic seatbelts. Uh, had I gotten that seven hundred dollar Camry wagon at auction back in summer two thousand, there would have been one. Two tone blue needed a clutch. Like that would have held up a lot better than the eighty nine GTI. But probably not be as go karty. It, it wouldn't have, but it would still be running today. I'd probably still be driving it. Yeah, you probably I hadn't would die in a fire in it. <laughs> <laughs> we we should still go half seas on a on a hearse. If I find a cheap one. We're totally going to do that. I want to do that. I want to tub out the hearse. <laughs> What's that again? <laughs> I'm putting drag radials on it. <laughs> uh, it's got to be relative. It'll, it'll be the ultimate in a Rob Zombie paraphernalia. <laughs> it'll be the Dragula. Yes. All right. God. Is your driveway long enough to accommodate said vehicle? It's like Mine is. Mine could fit nine of them. Hearse for sale. Here we go. <laughs> this is still got a body in it, and we don't know what to do with it. Let it hit the no. floor. <laughs> it's raining men. <laughs> you saw, you like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Both these songs are of the same event, oh. but from very different perspectives. Extremely different perspectives. Let's see. I just searched for hearses for sale. 
Limoandhearseforsale.com. Who knew? Who knew? You need more uh, sriracha. Mm-hmm. Are you going to regret this later? Or is it's, your reflux? Uh, I've got Pepsi in the car. Well, you don't, you don't look like you're struggling with it, so normally you would tell me. Yeah, it's... Uh, the, the curse isn't bothering me yet. <laughs> uh, that's a big cock on there. Uh, okay, that's a new Wait, one. Are we out of that beer? Is that beer out now? Yeah. You snuffed the rooster? <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, now we know he's going to die. I mean, all these are new. I don't want a new hearse. I want the old ones. I don't want that new dead body smell on the old ones. <laughs> what you doing? Picturing. Oh, nice. Um, Let's see here. Used. Yes, I don't want to buy a brand new one. Hmm. Find 33 hearse. Find th- okay, evidently, according to carsforsale.com, the plural of hearse is hearse. It says find 33 oh, hearse shit. as low as 8900 bucks. That's doable. It's not a moose. It's hearses. I would totally lift a hearse. What the fuck? <laughs> this would make it harder to get the body in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Dear want. beloved, we're gathered here today, but we still cannot lift this body into how, our Escalade hearse. How brilliant is this? It just popped up. It says, "Get notifications when a hearse becomes available for you." <laughs> I should have put yes. The good, pretty low mileage. I don't think I would want a uh, that generation of North Star V8 terribleness. Yeah. Oh my God! I didn't even know that existed. Okay. What your stig? All right, I'm about to open a new tab. Get ready for this awesomeness. How about a 2003 Lincoln Town Car hearse? I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> it's hideous. Does it come with the Iowa stereo for the most amazing tasteless <laughs> advertisement ever? Is it? That is ugly as hell. How much the for the manual transmission swap on that, guys? About 50 bucks. Got a Sawzall and a Mustang. You're good. Does it include the mullet? And why is that in the middle of it? A 92 BMW 3 Series. Give me that car. I, it, I, want, I want the three-seaters touring. I want the E30 wagon. It is a wagon. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's not a hearse, though. I'm not sure what. Oh, it's ten. a hearse for short people. I want an old hearse. Much like, 60, like my car is sh- hearse for short people. Your car is a hearse for short people. My my car is a hearse for square people. My her- it's a hearse for Lego people. <laughs> <laughs> it's Minecraft now. I don't even Not know what yours. that is. Uh, with all the graphical advancements in the world, kids are obsessed with the game that looks like you're playing with Legos. Minesweeper? Not yours. <laughs> 96. Okay, we're getting a little bit older. I mean, if, if, I feel like if you're going to drive a hearse around, you're going to get a lot less funny stares if it's like the Munster Mobile than a like brand new one. Uh, either that or you'll get some really good fucking business. <laughs> no, what you need is a 62 Cadillac. Does it look like the Ghostbusters car? No, that was a 59. But the... Vertical headlight arrangement looks way more menacing than the horizontal headlight arrangement from the one in the movie. Yeah, <clears throat> true. Yeah, to have that like proto GTO style in a car that's twenty two feet long, and then you've got some monster V eight in it, and you're running no cats. <laughs> Meow. That bitch gonna sing to you, yo. It's gonna be amazing. 59 Cadillac Broadmoor Skyview. That is brilliant. You know, I say what I said. However, (laughs) I would not kick that out of my garage, even if it is too long for it. That is cool as the other side of the pillow. Where is the... Fuck your nomad. I want that car. 75 Cadillac Superior Crown Hearse. I like the other one better. Yep. Yep. That that one just looks like a Cadillac for a following 20 years. Uh, yeah, it does, it does, it does. Uh, unrestored Packard Henny hearse. 
cool, but well, still not as cool as the other. Wait a minute. What better way to have a hearse than a dead brand <laughs> for dead people? You could totally put a Pentium like logo on it. On the back would be fan fucking tastic. <laughs> Pentium one. Pentium point five. Might as well have some fun with it. Uh, that's a forty six. No, you don't want that. <laughs> four, four links airstream I, I actually, hearse. I actually had a Pentium for my. My own first computer was an OG Pentium. This is a this is a, this is funny. It's a side load bus hearse. What in the blue blooded fuck is that? Yeah, you know, if you got a service to attend to and you got to go camping, <laughs> that <laughs> this weird car of yours, give oh it to God. me. Airstream. Apparently, Airstream at one point in the 1980s tried to market its RV as a funeral coach designed to transport the deceased and family together and flowers all at once from the funeral home because nothing puts the fun in funeral like sitting on top of a casket in a motorhome. <laughs> that was, that's the, that's the I one. sat on top of grandpa! <laughs> that's the best description for anything... I've ever read in my entire fucking life. <laughs> oh, good grief, Charlie Brown. That's fantastic. All right, let's. I, I need to buy that. That's great. So, so what do you call that? The the lateral placement of casket. <laughs> I, I mean, if you have a, a a guy who likes the twisties, that I mean, that's going to be a lot of <laughs> going to be a lot of flat hair. On top of that body, <laughs> sliding back and forth. How about a Volvo hearse? A two-door Volvo hearse. Ooh. That's cool. That's like Nick Cage at the end of the rock, Volvo. Yeah, and it's pre... An old, five, uh, an old 544. It's pre-diagonal bar uh, grill, too. Um, Pontiac Bonneville hearse slash ambulance. Unfortunately, it only has the front, but it has the vertical headlights... Which we all know we both probably like. probably a good bit cheaper than that caddy I like so much. Probably. Oh, my God. That's too pretty to drive. Um, Miguel Caballero Cobian, this, this past weekend, the International Classic Vehicle Salon in Madrid, has this Spanish funeral coach. That's too pretty to drive. Rumba. That is beautiful. That's that, Span- that that's is Spanish. That's a good-looking putmobile. Yeah. Did you see the uh, Papa John memes? It was like somebody That's said the that, latest nonsense. The god, the uh, it was like the uh, the the, the plastic ingredients, plastic pizza. It was, it was a a statue in Italy that was uh weeping. I guess somebody poured it. It was like, it was like a new Papa from Papa John's has been selected. Uh, the only one I saw was uh, black smoke coming out of a Papa John's location. <laughs> the black smoke has implied that a new Papa is being sought for for Papa John's. <laughs> Uh, 1960 Miller Meteor Cadillac hearse in camo. Do you want to transport your dead body in the stealth of night? It was a deer. <laughs> a John Deere? No, fuck that company. <laughs> uh, They're trying to do away with people's right to repair their own vehicles. That's a bad press and if that goes through so fuck them uh, I, if you ask me a lot of those are doing that they they're making everything needlessly complicated mm-hmm. and i'm sorry like having to it's go it's a fucking tractor dickhead no having to go into your infotainment system to move your mirrors no yeah if your screen goes out in a modern even semi-luxury car like can you move my seat up no can you turn the ac on no can you roll the window down? No. If the touchscreen of mine goes out, shit, I better use headphones. The new headphones are That's working out it. rather well, though. Yep. I like them. Yeah, Nakamichi, mm. like, the brand that I was first introduced to from when I first worked at Scams Club in their tire department. When back in 2003, mind you, this is pushing 15 years ago having started there, you get yourself a nice big flat screen television to the tune of... Guess. Oh, three? How many inches? I'll say 50. So a generously proportioned flat screen. A brand new one. Thin, yes. 1,500. 
Go up. Go way up. Go six times up. Oh my god. Nine thousand dollars. Or six of my Jeeps. <laughs> oh my goodness. My how things have changed. Well, look at the prices of like a um when VCRs yeah. came out mm-hmm. and DVD players. Yep. And Steve was the proud owner of a laser disc player. You want to tell the lovely people about that? <laughs> At the Habitat Restore along Lake Norman a couple years ago, I picked up a Laserdisc player because, hey, they have a Laserdisc player for 20 bucks. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. It starts, it runs, it had no remote. And, you know, this is a really neat novelty. Well, had about 20 movies for it and <clears throat> realized this thing's huge. I'm not using this at all. And it acquired... You know, yeah, many movies. So, so the player to a guy who only wanted the player, but he mentioned he may be interested in the movies. Okay, sucker. A week <clears throat> later, he texts me, you "Saw the movies? Yes. Meet him. Sell the movies too." So I don't know if I broke even on it, or maybe made a little bit of money on it but you know having had it all for three odd years who knows who cares uh he told me that the one laser disc that he had was jurassic park and his brother had picked out the laser disc movie thinking it was a soundtrack lp placed the laser disc on the record player and tried to play it. <laughs> Despite whatever have you with hybrid media. Oh. Let's just say yeah, this was okay. unsuccessful. I think hybrid and the laser disc was ruined. I think hybrid media might be my next album title. <laughs> Hopefully not hybrid theory. I'm too old to listen to that. I'm not. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, so realizing that his dinosaur movie was... He needed more stuff to play on, so... So now we go watch True Lies or Leave Weapon 3. Or the Three Tenders or whatever the hell else I had. I took a picture of it so I don't have to remember any of this nonsense. It was, like, it was just a completely bizarre thing because, hey, it's there. Hey, let's see what this is about. Ugh. Yep, this looks pretty good. But in the era of 1080p and 4K, it could be better. And I'm not into Star Wars, so I don't care that the standard, unrestored, unmodified Star Wars movies on LaserDisc are the best way to see the originals because everything else is CGI'd up and Lucasized. So what what was the uh, frame rate for LaserDisc? Do you remember? If it's not twenty four frames a second, I can't help you. So, or what was the, uh, or what was the qual was was the quality? It <clears throat> it may have been up to four eighty p. Okay. It was just it was the best way to watch movies prior to the original DVD, but was absolutely cost prohibitive because the players brand new were two grand. <laughs> the movies would have been a hundred bucks each. Fuck me. Whereas, you know, it didn't take long for VCRs to become you know under hundred bucks. No, the movies to become under twenty bucks, if not ten. <laughs> Much like DVDs, that all right initially they're expensive, but you know the media gains steam, so the players get cheap, the movies get cheap, the movies get real cheap, and now no one cares. I've got two boxes of DVDs <laughs> that I probably still can't sell. I'll keep a few of them. Eh. But the rest, fuck it. They're getting goodwilled or set on fire. You could stream everything nowadays anyway. So, I mean, any, I found me a hearse I want. So, I think this is the winner. 1962. Cadillac. That's a handsome devil. That is... Uh, uh, oh shit! It's been sold. Well, let's see how much it sold for. If it will tell me. That's also <clears> one of the best Smith songs titles, by the way. Of not unlike the 
Hess and Eisenhart, the Eureka Company, had been in business building custom-made buggies, coaches, hearses, and ambulances. And vacuum cleaners. Si- yes, since the late 1800s in Rock Falls, Illinois. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Don't care. Just want to see how much it costs. That sounds like the most dangerous town ever. How about a 390 cubic inch V8 developing 300 horsepower through a four-speed hydromatic automatic transmission, rear-wheel drive, four-barrel carburetor, 12-inch disc brakes. Holy fuck nuggets. Hell yeah. And something that vintage? Well, it had to stop 5,400 pounds. So Any car today. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, like a modern Honda Civic. It had air conditioning. Bad ass. Thirty six. Well, gotta make sure that cold body's still cold, dude. Thirty six thousand miles. That's impressive. Um, well, they don't have that much to. They don't have that many miles to drive. It doesn't say what the sales price was, but they're pretty cheap because it's really kind of a niche market. So it's not like there's a whole lot of them that are. That would be boss too. I would totally like to rat rod one out, like to have a little bit of rust on the outside. That would be sweet. Oh my God, Emily's going to be mad at me if she comes home and there's a hearse. Especially if it's in the place of the S2K. (laughs) It's an S2K swapped hearse, honey. It's fine. No. (laughs) But twin engine? Not now, Mosler. (laughs) Mid engine hearse. Where there used to be death, there is now life. Uh, Steve looks like he just ate like 20 Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> not the candy. Triple Tur- is like, yeah, that that engine's not meant to hold three tons of anything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Chris Anthony. The dirtiest town in your state. Tarboro. Um, this is going strictly by the name of the city. Not Climax and High Point. Climax was North Carolina's. Sugar Tit was South Carolina's. <laughs> There's a Bird. Sugar Tit, South Carolina. So, Steve, give me a state and I will tell you. <laughs> Nevada. Sugar Bunker. That I think I might just call him. Emil- Never mind. <laughs> hey, honey, can I visit the Sugar Bunker today? What's that? No, Never mind. <laughs> South Dakota. Bone steel. (laughs) (laughs) The most lewd sounding name in each state. (laughs) Maine. Banger. (laughs) Yeah, the (laughs) cat. Keep it going. Washington. Hump tulips. Hey yo, hump too. How to get kicked out of the Netherlands? Well, I don't know. They couldn't name it Fuck Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Florida. Um, Mikasuki. Mikasuki, long time. <laughs> How long? M I C C O S U K E E. Mikasuki. That's more of an Indian name. I don't think that's really dirty. But it's certainly more lewd than kissing me. It's, you know, that's kind of true. There's some really good ones on here, so <laughs> keep going. <laughs> give me, give me a fucking... <laughs> Go down the seaboard. All right. New Hampshire. <sighs> Effingham. <laughs> <laughs> See also Illinois. Uh, booty. B O O D Y. <laughs> Indiana Jones. Floyd's knobs. Hey yo. <laughs> Better than uh, Pence's knobs. Ugh. Ugh. Pence's buses gas stations. He, he does look like Cotton Hill. <laughs> For Monster. Cozy Corner. This is too cute. That's yeah. That's that's probably the least entertaining one there. I know Idaho's is dick shooter, all one word. Wow, dick shooter. I think that wins. I don't know, man. There's still more. There's 
I mean, there's you just want to go down the list, don't you? Cummings, you go down the list. There's Cummings, North Dakota, Rough and Ready, California, Mary's oh my. Igloo, Alaska. Ooh, that uh, that sounds cold. Butternuts, New York, <laughs> Wound Socket, <laughs> Rhode Island, <laughs> Wound Socket, Swallow Hill, Delaware, Intercourse, Pennsylvania, no. Wiener, Arkansas. It's Wiener. <laughs> yeah. We pronounce it Arkansas here. Hooker, Oklahoma. Drywood, Kansas. Ball Town, Iowa. Goshen Hole, Wyoming. Three Way, Arizona. Splunge, Mississippi. Splunge. Ball Play, Alabama. Ball Play. Ball Play, Alabama. Dick, <laughs> Michigan. Stars of blue. Dick, Michigan. Spread Eagle, Wisconsin. Used to be Richard. Spread Eagle is actually a nice town. Very wide open. Kind of wet in the middle. Wide open spaces. (laughs) Chicksy dicks. Blue Ball Village, Maryland. No. Yep. Blue Ball Village. That sounds painful. (laughs) Brohard, West Virginia. That is whack. Uh, that's Cooter, uh, Missouri. All right. The rest of them are stupid. The rest of them are stupid, but there's some really good ones. Wankers Corner, Oregon. That's a good, I think Dick Shooter actually might be the best one. Where do you live? Dick Shooter. (laughs) Uh, there's, well, there's Big Lick, like an hour away because I grew up near there. I thought that was out west. Uh, well, there probably is. Like, Kentucky has one called Big Bone Lick. Cumming, Georgia. I know a guy that lives in Cumming. Yeah, that's right. That's Atlanta. Yep. Uh, Dracula. It's like, it's not Dracula. <laughs> Bullshit. Have you seen Dracula Dead and Loving It with uh, Leslie Nielsen? <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, Leslie Nielsen started out doing... Uh, serious stuff. Yeah, he, he was a serious actor. And then... Silly stuff pays the bills. Silly stuff is what we're going to do. You're out of beer again. Yep. What are you going to do about that? Drink to that. What's next? Something hmm. you brought. Well, I uh, think in the theme, the liquor Hefeweizen seems about appropriate. We should do a Hefe. We haven't done a Hefe in a while. Yeah. That's Hefe, man. Uh, Well... Just don't mention Gwen Stefani when it tastes of a particular fruit. Uh oh. This is plantains. P L A I N T A I N S. <laughs> Doesn't flow as well. <laughs> Says you. Uh, well, let's get another beer then. How about that? Well, Steve and I have rebeard by the uh the combination of technological advances and such. So, Steve, what are we drinking now? A liquor Hefeweizen. That's liquor, man. Whatever, man. Aus dem Herzen der Natur. Brotradition seit 1854. Hell yes. All of that. Uh, imported. From, from the heart of nature. It's been brewed since 1854. <laughs> German's easy, if you want it to be. Everything sounds authoritative, and it's aged. It's an aged heffy. Hey, I said it as gently as I could. That's really, really good. That's mighty tasty. So off, um, off mic, Steve and I were talking. My, um, my lovely brother-in-law, who shares a name with me and a mole on his very upper right lip, suspiciously, and we're about the same height and weight. Anyway, yep, yeah, right there. He has the same mole in the same place. Anyway. Not the same mole. We don't share it and send it back and forth to each other via mail. Not now, Fred Savage. We uh. Oh, mole, 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 mole. On a scale of like, I had paid any attention to that, by the way. On a scale of Fred to Randy, how savage was that? Uh, he is getting rid of. He's already getting rid of his Mazda three, Mazda Speed three. That was a lovely car. That thing was buggy. It was very comfortable. I, I feel like Mazda is doing now what Honda was doing in the 90s. I think Mazda's the really fun Jap car now. Because Toyota's definitely not. Uh, but Honda's definitely not. Look, look at what Honda was making in 2000. 
you had you could get an Integra Type R, a Civic Si, a Honda Prelude, an S2000. That's pretty good stuff right there. Uh, NSX. You could still get the uh, NA2 NSX. Now you can get a Civic Type R and pay ten thousand over sticker. You get a Civic Si. And both of those look like beast whales. Yeah, and you can get an NSX, but you're going to have to spend close to $200,000, I think, after markup. So, yeah. I missed the days. And now the NSX is not an NSX. Nope, but it is American-made. It's made here in the great old U.S. of A. Nice insight. Shots fired. (laughs) Did you see, or no, you didn't. Did I tell you about the uh, shop, uh, hello to LHT Performance in uh, Florida, and right outside of Tampa, they do a lot of Honda stuff. The, the suit people that you're talking to, yep. or want to talk to? Yeah, the uh, they have an all-wheel drive, uh, turbocharged, uh, K-swapped Honda Insight. So, yep, they gutted the Insight, and they put an the all-wheel drive. first in CRX-looking one? Yes. Go on. Okay, I'll show you. I'll try to show you the pictures. Uh, hey, phone at 19%. Uh, but they finally sold it. It was like a, I think it was a shop car. Um, LHT Performance K-Site. They called it the K-Site instead of the Insight. It was a neat fucking car. Like, it. It had way more power than it ever had any business having in a car that weighs as much as oh, your shoes. Much, much like the people that take the CRZs and do the same thing. Yep. It's like, what you got? A CRZ Type R? A what? 200 rear wheel horsepower in a car that weighs 1,800 pounds. Okay. Complete lower aluminum subframe. Uh, aluminum inner fender stiffening, six point front tie bars. OEM mounts, S2000 gauge cluster. That's fucking fantastic. K20 with a new clutch, four to one header. Jesus Christ. Build time, 60 days. Were they making a TV show while they're doing this? Maybe. That sounds pretty quick. There you go. That would be so much fun. (laughs) That would be a ridiculous amount of fun. And it's not turbocharged, it's actually an NA, but it's 200 rear wheel horsepower in a car that was never designed to have that much. <clears throat> that's a great, that's a great car. That guy, I believe that guy's from Germany, or he's he's somewhere European. k Turbo, 300 horsepower, 45 miles per gallon. <laughs> so if you really want to go fast and you have nothing to carry, mm-hmm. Jesus, and that's all 90 octane. We get a damn sight higher than that here. Yeah, it's funny to think of like, all right, everything here's 87, 89, and 93. Does anything require mid grade? <clears throat> no, and let me tell you a story about that. Um really there's no such thing as mid grade. What they do is they mix premium and regular. Okay. So your eighty nine octane, one day you fill it up, it might be 89 the next day it might be 91 because they might have put more 93 the next day it might be 88 because they put less it's just kind of got a minimum ish in it yep it's just apparently in california like 91's tops and here it's all 93 has been as long as i can remember sometimes you might see 92 sometimes 94 Mm. but 93 is 99 percent consistent yep it is and well You've got a car that takes premium. I've got a car that takes premium. And Costco always has some of the best prices around. <laughs> Therefore, car always goes to Costco to get gas for premium for three bucks a gallon. Yeah, I So here we are in mid July twenty eighteen. So my mileage may in fact vary <laughs> as my go kart's getting roughly thirty miles to the gallon because it's just a forty five cruiser. Yeah, I don't have to. I used to put uh, premium in the Jeep. Uh, then I figured out I was okay. wasting money because no necessita. It was not necessary at all. That 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 engine was made to run on paint. redneck spit. Yeah, so it, it, it'll run on pretty paint, much anything. Paint and stray moonshine. Yeah, two valves per cylinder push rod. 
engine doesn't really require premium gasoline. <sighs> Man, we're already at two hours. Oh, kittens. Yeah, uh, we oh, have so many places seven. to be. Not. Uh, a couple of hours. Got somebody who really wants to see me. Oh, shucks. Dow. Well, hope you get that uh, situation squared away. Maybe even circled away. Mm, triangle. Interesting. Well, uh, we, uh, we've we been trying to put the podcasts on all the major... Well, I've, I've looked into it, and they're still too big. The, I don't want to de- de- degrade the quality. I could put them on... Uh, no worse than we can right now. But I don't want to degrade the quality because there's a, a a data limit. You can't put more than a certain amount of megabytes. And one of our episodes is almost close to what the limit is for the whole month, and we release two a month. But be patient with us, or go to Clip Grab. Get, just download Clip Grab, and then you can just download the episode, rip it straight from YouTube. You it's can do a that. T audio converter or T encoder or whatever, mm-hmm. or Tube Mate. That. They're always around it. Yep. But a lot of people get their start on YouTube anyway, so it doesn't matter. If you're listening to it, that's all that matters. So uh, we need to get some more paraphernalia from Nintendo in here. We got the power glove. I need to go get the gun. What else was Nintendo or gaming related we could bring in here? Got a few. Got a busted satellite. The uh, remote like the remote control four player device. Four play? <laughs> Uh, that was the other. It was a four score. It was the wired one. <laughs> gotcha. The uh, the wireless and that, was, and that was a lot longer than seven years ago. I think we had the wireless controllers for the. I don't think it was the SNES. We had wireless controllers, and they were rubbish. Just never fucking worked right. Well, it's probably if they were infrared, you had to hold them in a certain way so it's pointing at the tiny waypoint on your system Mm -hmm. to make them work. Yep. Then it would, but much like, you know, TV remote point, like pointed roughly at the screen kind of works. Yep. Point it at the wall. It'll bounce off the wall. It works. Mm -hmm. Point it into your palm of your hand. (laughs) It's not seeing shit. (laughs) Can't see shit, Captain. (laughs) Well, for episode 12, I think this might be a wrap. Still got to have a beer. You still got more beers. That's all right. Ah, eh, whatever. Yep. Yeah, two hours is a good limit. We'll drink off air. We've done it before. <laughs> we'll do it again. For Steve, I'm AJ. And for AJ, I'm Steve. See you guys in episode 13, maybe with a guest. Wait. Damn it, last week was Friday the 13th. Fuck. But it'll be, oh, we should have done episode 13 on Friday the 13th. That time it wasn't good. Oh, well. Oh, well, yep. More beer. See you fuckers in August. Bye. Later. You didn't say toodles. You always say toodles. (laughs) Say toodles. Toodles.